zero, is it true it's going to be zero exactly when f and g are equal? Yes, if it's continuous. But if it's not continuous, then we'll, we'll talk about what that means later. But you'd have to be a little more careful then. You'd have to place functions in equivalence classes. Yes, Dylan had another idea. I'll call this di for integral. Uh, what did you say now? D what? What do you mean by max? What do you mean by the greatest value? The lar what do you mean by the largest absolute value? So you want to look at f of x minus g of x, yes? And you want this, there's a bunch of these to compare, aren't there, right? So here may be um, the maximum, the, the not maximum, the, 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 the largest, well, not largest, the supremum. Thank you. Because that, you know, that this maximum might not be achieved, but the supremum will be because it's a collection of real numbers. Uh, if we have to now define the space we're on. So first, the supremum over all x in uh, whatever the interval is. Uh, in this case, in this case, actually, we don't need to restrict it to a particular interval, do we? So it could be defined over all R as long as we're on the space of continuous bounded functions. And so this has a special name. We write C, and we have the subscript B, and this could be defined on all of R. As long as it's bounded functions, then the supremum will not will be will will be. Then the distance will be bounded, and the supremum exists. Right? The situation you might run into is this situation. Imagine these two. Sorry. Imagine these two functions, where the supremum, th these distances just get larger and larger and larger, but the maximum doesn't exist. But the supremum will. That's why we use the su supremum. This is actually. Uh, called the supremum distance. So I'll call this D soup. It's the soup, sometimes we say soup norm. Okay, and it's it's a very, very natural one to consider. Excellent. Okay. Um, great. Let me let me finish then with a, a couple of uh, ideas that we will build and develop next time. So in a metric space, one of the, the, the most important uh, uh, concepts which helps you get a sense of what the metric is doing is the concept of an open ball. What's an open ball? Well, you think of a ball as round object, right? Uh, and mathematically, that would be the set of all points whose distance is less than or equal to some number, yes? Or less than some number. That'd be open, right? So an open ball, we often write n sub r of x. This is the neighborhood. That's the way the book talks about it. Of radius r is basically going to be the set of all y such that the distance from x to y is less than r. Okay. Now, if you want the closed ball, it's the same definition except what? Less than or equal to, and you might notate it with a, a bar over the top. Okay. And so, if if you want, uh, just to show you here, for the regular notion of distance, Euclidean metric, the balls look like you expect. They're like, like this, right? That's a ball. But here, the balls look very different. I claim in the staircase metric, the set of all points whose staircase metric from here is the same actually looks like something else. It looks like a diamond. That's an open ball in the staircase metric, right? It's a diamond, right? It's a diamond centered around here. I'll, I'll let you think about that, OK? OK, so why, why are balls going to be important? Well, balls are going to be important because we can use them to define the notion of what it means for things to be close, as in 
limit point. Okay, so what? So let's say if we, uh, if you want to talk about a limit point, what does it mean for a point to be a limit point of this set? If you have some set a, a limit point. So let me just make a definition. Let me make a picture here. Here's a picture. What does it mean for this point to be a limit point? Well, what that means is you give me any ball around this point, and no matter which ball I take, I will always have points of what? Of this set in it, in the ball. That's what it means to be a limit point. This creature is not a limit point because there is a ball that doesn't even touch E. So we'll get, we're going to say P in uh, E, uh, sorry, P in X is a limit point of E, which is a subset of X, if for every, if every neighborhood, that's what a ball is, an open ball is a neighborhood, of P contains points, a point of E. A point Q that's not P uh, and such that Q is an E. It's important that there be some other point that is uh, not, uh, that is in the set, uh, in the neighborhood. Okay. That's what it means to be a limit point. And so, for instance, if I have a, here's a, here's a picture here. Suppose I take the set of reciprocals, one at one, one half, one third, one quarter. Does this have a limit point? I claim zero is a limit point because any open ball around this set, would you agree, has contains a point, yes? Of this green set? Any open ball contains, it should be open. We usually dot those. Contains a point of the green set. So the yellow point is a limit point of the green set. Okay? We're going to explore the concept of limit point in great detail next time. Okay? I encourage you to get a start on the homework um, for this week. You can do most of the problems already. And uh, I, I want you to come see the tutors or me uh, during office hours if you have questions. All right, see you next time.